welcome to the last stream from Lock and Load 2017. This is it. This is it. Then we're going then home. We're closing shop. We'll yeah. tear it down tomorrow. We have actually pretty something something very special planned for everybody here. Uh, so we have the newest member of the dev team. Yeah. Will Pagani, our development assistant, playing the brand new army. Grimkin. But I would say not only is he the, the newest member of dev, he is also the champion of the Grimkin at this point. Oh, yeah. Like, this boy has been repping Grimkin since he arrived. Yeah. And barely knew what they did. And uh, he's facing off against a very special opponent, our first ever Iron Gauntlet World Champion, That's right. Jay Larson. So this is, this is really a matchup of, uh, of cataclysmic proportions here. Um, you've got two very, very competent, very strong tournament players. Yeah. Uh, each facing off in a casual game, but one that I expect will be, uh, well, apparently we're back to us now. Yep. I'll sit up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the good old I won't lounge away because I'm just like, I'm going to watch the TV now. That's I'm tired. That's we look like the whole time. Pretty much. So uh, anyway, oh, now we're back. All right, cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue with my good posture. Yeah. Uh, yeah so we've got we've got two uh, two very high level competitive players. Yeah. Um, so, so high level that they're deploying off the clock right now. That's right. Well, and you know. Oh, oh there, you, there, there we go. go. It's like he heard you. Yeah. Good job, Pagani. Uh, um, he only got a he only got like a two minute you know bonus. <laughs> only for a two that, minute head you know? start. He's a little rusty. You gotta give you gotta give him a handicap. We'll call and, that we'll call that the Pagani handicap. And anybody looking at the table, Pagani cap. Anybody looking at the table, something to notice, this, this scenario might seem a little strange. This is a 2017 Correct. scenario. This is Recon 2. In fact, I'm going to take out the telestration here and point out to everybody what's going on. Mm, do it. So we have the two zones. We see one here and the other one, obviously, up top. Boop, 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 boop. There are two flags, one here and one here, and then two objectives here and here, which on this grim, grim kin table are represented by these sweet giant trees. Both players decided to pay, take the same objective. They've taken the fuel cache, which gives them uh, the opportunity to give a single model Pathfinder mm -hmm. at the start of their turn. And for lists, we're looking at uh, Jay Larson running Axis, the Harmonic Enforcer, in the Destruction whatever theme for us. Destruction and Initiative. The initiative, there you go. Uh, words are hard. He has an inverter, 12 galvanizers in his in his uh, <laughs> battle group, a corollary. He's got the transfinite, emergent projector, Thanks, permutation Jay. servitors along with it. Three groups of elimination servitors, two groups of reflex servitors, all free because of the theme force, and one lowly OptiFX directive unit. Yeah, Jay Larson running a uh, countercharge dot list. Yes. Uh, Will Pagani, on the other hand, is running a list that we've seen him play numerous times around the office. Uh, he's running the Child in Dark Menagerie with two Skin and Bones, two, uh, three Gorehounds, one Cage Razor, four free Crabbits, yep. uh, Death Knell, Lady Carriana Rose, three Gremlin Swarms, Glimmer Imp, and a full unit of Dread Rot. So both, uh, both players wrapping really big battle groups. Yeah, both players bringing a single unit. Pretty much. And uh, one being the Pagani's Dread unit is better, though. Yeah, Pagani's unit is uh, capable of... of you know, murdering do, things, doing some damage, but the Optifex Directive obviously has its 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 use in this list. I mean, you think about those poor dread rots. They're like, we got brought to harvest some stuff. Oh, there's only three guys over there. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. But I mean, can't, can't really harvest robot parts. Uh, I mean, they could, but they don't really know how to digest them. Now, if you're uh, if you're new to 2017, there's some significant changes. First off, uh, first player to get five more CPs than their opponent at the end of the turn wins the game. So it's not just race to five. You can win with eight CPs, three CPs. It doesn't really matter. You score a CP by either controlling a flag, controlling a zone, or destroying the enemy objective, which you can only do once. Only battle group models such as Warjacks or mm -hmm. Warbeasts can control the rectangular zones. Uh, I'm sorry, Warcasters and Warlocks can control anything. So the Warcasters can also control the regular rectangular zones. And then those flags can only be controlled by Warcasters, Warlocks, and Solos. Correct. Uh, there's actually nothing on the table for infantry to control, which is why they probably don't have a ton of infantry. I mean, maybe. They didn't know the scenario before they stepped to the table, though, I don't believe. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, if we go to back to a top view of the table, I'll go over what they've decided on the uh, terrain. So we have a... Obst uh, obstruction right here with the clock tower. We have two hills, one at the top, one at the bottom. Another obstruction here in this building of a sign. They are counting this area as a forest. So in previous games we've live streamed, you saw this line be a forest and this line be a forest. They are not. It's only this center circle. Looks like we've got a piece of rubble right here, and there is also an obstacle, a wall, right here in terms of terrain. Now for his arcana cards, uh, Pagani has chosen outside of the Trump, he has chosen, uh, I'm going to get the names wrong now because I'm sacrificing, sacrificing Ill, Ill Omens. Yep. There we go. Um, Ill Omens, when a model is destroyed, mm -hmm. um, he can force every model on Jay's side of the tail to suffer minus one to its attack and damage rolls. Not the worst. 
uh, it's not fun. I've played against it a number of times, and I didn't really like it. Uh, in addition, sacrifice. After a warlock can play this card when an enemy model destroys a friendly faction model in this warlock's control range. After that model's destroyed, you remove all damage points from each friendly Grimkin model in the warlock's control range. Which means that, you have That to, one sucks. Yeah, so basically you have to fully commit to killing something. If you've just done a little bit of damage to all the models sort of across the board... And then you uh, kill a Krabbit, and then you kill, whoopsie for you. Yeah, you kill a Krabbit, he heals the entire... Uh, the whole army. It's its its ridiculous. And then, of course, there's the child's trump, right. Wrath. Which is interesting in that it bumps up the fury stats of models in his battle group by one, so it basically allows them to get a little bit more a uh, little bit more work out of those war beasts. And he can only play that when an enemy model damages a model in the warlock's battle group with an attack. So yep. it gives him kind of that extra push for next turn. Yep. Now, this is Pagani's personal Grimkin army. These are models that he uh, raced to paint as he got them in. And uh, let's go ahead and get straight to the action. Uh, now, just real quick for Windy Sales, the Green Fire Grimkin Army is Dallas Kemp Studio Painter's personal army. So we've got a number of different staffers with their own very nicely painted uh, studio or uh, Grimkin armies. Yeah. Along with the Studio One that's been displayed in the cases and such. Yep. Looks like we've got a lot of running on turn one. Uh, we had a table mic to hear the players, but it went dead. So we're just going to try and call it as, as best we, we pretty much can to, to figure out what they're doing. Tony's busy eating crackers. It's fine. Tony, don't worry about it. Tony, you eating crackers? I mean, I can't. Can I even hear you? I no, I can. No, now, now, now I can. can now all I can of a sudden, hear, there's I, like sound again. Thanks, Tony. There's no table sound though. Uh, anyway, it doesn't really matter. There's a lot of running happening. Uh, I'm sure the child has. Oh, I hear a death knell. I hear Pagani's sweet, sweet, sultry tones. What were we saying though? I was going to say that I'm uh, I'm sure Tantrum has been put up by the child. Oh, I would yeah. be shocked if it has not. So Tantrum's a new spell that only the child has. Yep. Cost 2, rain self, area AoE control. Uh, it, it's an upkeep spell. Here's how it reads. If one or more models in the spellcaster's battle group were damaged by enemy attacks while in the spellcaster's command range during your opponent's last turn, during your maintenance phase, one model in the spellcaster's, spellcaster's battle group in its control range can advance three inches and make one basic basic melee attack. So it's like this weird pseudo vengeance. Yes, and it is a difficult one to plan around. Having played against it, Pagani uses it to great effect, um, especially in the child. I've seen him use it on the child more often than anything. Right. So we've got the Krabbit now running. Or walking and then leaping. Boing! Yep. Oh, and he knocks over a dread rot. Game state. Didn't leap high enough. Come on, Mo Pagani. As a fellow member of Dev, you're supposed to be a good uh, good influence on players. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Pagani passing the clock back to GA. If you're just joining us, you're watching a War Machine and Horde staff battle between Will Pagani, Development Assistant, and Jay Larson, our first ever Iron Gauntlet World Champion. They are playing the brand new 2017 Steamroller Scenarios, and Will Pagani is playing the brand new army that just released at Lock and Load 2017, the Grimkin. And for those of you being like, Pagani's got 10 Fury out, there's no way the child is Fury 10. That is correct. The child is not Fury 10. However, Gremlin Swarms, due to the Dark Menagerie theme force, gain Serenity. Serenity reads, at the beginning of your control phase, before leeching, you can remove one Fury Point from a friendly faction Warbeast within one inch of a model with Serenity. So he can run his Warbeast a lot hotter than usual, thanks to the Theme Force benefits. The uh, Transfinite Emergence Projector walking into position. Yep. Uh, this is going to be a, just a straight countercharge party on Jay's side of the board. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's what Axis really wants to do most of the time anyway, so... so and in this theme with all the galvanizers, it's... Uh now, the Convergence is, uh, is a War Machine faction, and it has a special trick called Induction, which says uh, they don't power up like normal Warjacks do, where they all get a free focus. But instead, when one of them spins a focus, they can induct it to another nearby Warjack, which means for a single focus, basically, you know, Axis gives one to one of his 12 Galvanizers if he wants to. I mean, the Corollary can also do the same. Uh, and then the entire battle group just gets to run. It's mm -hmm. disgusting. It's it's useful. I Disgusting. Mean, to be fair, if he was a normal War Machine Warcaster, and it, it, he'd get one for all of his Warjacks anyway, they'd all get a run. The difference is in, in how you can like waterfall everything to one model now. Waterfall in robots. Focus, I think. Wow. Waterfall in focus. Jay looks super intense right now.
JK. Jay always looks that way. Jay's a delightful human being, by the way. Mm. We're, we're going to have dinner tonight. I don't, know Great. Where, I don't know where we're going. Uh, I mean, there's not many options in Bellevue on a Sunday night. <laughs> so you might be going to Burger King. I don't, I don't want to. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Bellevue basically closes down this late on a Sunday. It's like it's like a zombie apocalypse town. It's just empty and dead and quiet and scary. And there may or may not be some kind of creature around an alley that's going to eat your face. Uh, Bellevue seems a little too shiny for that. The access going now. Yep. But he's going to throw a razor wall out just to protect uh, his his jacks from the. Uh, I'm sure we're going to see. Rot. So iron aggression on the inverter. Yep. I'm positive we're going to see onslaught. Yep. There it is. So and he's going to advance. No razor wall. Not yet. He doesn't need it just yet because they can't get there. But I I think razor wall will actually be a useful spell this game. Well, we've seen a couple of players over the weekend, especially in the Iron Gauntlet, use razor wall with unstoppable force quite cleverly. Unstoppable force granting bulldoes. Yep. And then bulldozing people into the razor wall. It's fun. It's good times. So spells that were put up, you said he put up Onslaught? Onslaught and uh, Iron, Iron Aggression. Iron. Yeah. So what Onslaught does is basically any any model, friendly faction model, and the spellcaster that begins their activation is control range. They get relentless charge for turns. So the forest or any of the, the rubble or anything like that, it doesn't really matter. He'll just get Pathfinder, and the Iron Aggression says that his, uh, his nice big heavy gets to uh, charge for free and gets boosted melee attacks. Mm -hmm. So much efficiency. The rest of the galvanizers moving up. Get him, Jay. Actually, I, I want both guys to win. Like, Pagani sits next to me in the dev pit, and like he's my boy, so I want him I to win. You wanted to shank Pagani. Why would I? Why would I shank Pagani? That's what you said earlier today. But Jay's also delightful, so I don't know who to root for. I'm gonna root for Pagani. It's Team Pride right there. I know. Plus, if he loses, I have to fire him. Oh, really? Yep. He knows that. I told him that the first time he came into the office. He's like, do I still get to play War Machine? I was like, you do, but when you lose, you get fired. Especially on live stream. Is there, in fact, is this the first game he's ever been live stream playing as a staffer? This, yes. All right. All right, Pagani. I'm going to say yes. Don't jack it up, boy. He's going to. Don't jack it up. He's going to lose, and then it's going to be sad. Saw the Corollary get inducted, too. Corollary can hold focus from turn to turn, unlike other jacks, so it's a little focus battery that can start handing him out to his galvanizers. Turn switches back to Pagani, and he better not make any mistakes. I don't know if Harkovic and Kozlov would really, like, find the romance together. They're pretty different. What are you talking about? It says, hey, PP lore guys, make Hark and Kozlov a canon couple. Oh, you're talking about the Twitch chat? Yeah. Like, because I wasn't seeing Twitch chat, and that con... That, that that came out of nowhere. I'm just saying. Like, you sounded like a crazy person for a second. Oh, now. When this goes on YouTube, people are going to be like, wait, what? They'll figure it out. They'll we, figure it out. With the combination of Serenity from the Gremlin Swarms and Leeching, Pagani gets all his fury back on his caster. Yep. And nothing frenzies. No problemo. An apparition first with the Gramlin swarms. Bloop. The Gram cramp lamps. So placed completely within two inches. Good deal. These Gramlin swarms are solid pieces with all of their nonsense. No, they're incorporeal. That's. Ba da pa pa. What? <laughs> so is half I'm loving it and half like Stinger? Yeah, man. I don't even know what's going on here. I do what I want. I don't even. I don't. I don't know. All right, so it looks like a the child's activating. Go, child, go! All right, child is walking mm -hmm. into the zone. A little bit further. No feats to pop because you are Grimkin. So, quick check on the inverter's threat range. 
Oh, just playing the child like a boss. I mean, this is how you play the child. Aggressive. And so, apparently just move everything that he yeah. wants to to get it out of the way. Pagani just ruining game state. Oh, yeah. This is the sloppiest play probably ever. Okay. So we just saw. Is that an abuse that yep. we just saw? Looks like a, now a force hammer? Yeah, he's going to cast a force hammer. I think an abuse went out on the uh, cage rager. Cage rager, it looked like. So we're going to force hammer a galvanizer. Force hammer, range 10, pow 12. And uh, instead of suffering normal damage roll, non incorporeal models, force hammer hits are slammed D6 inches directly away from the spell's point of origin. It's a slam. Kaboom. It's a big old slam. It is. I am not going to keep track of the damage on the different 12 galvanizers. Just I'm going to know some of them are beat up. You're going to trust that Jay will do so? I'm going to trust. sweet numbering system? I'm going to trust the world champ and a fellow member of Dev to uh, track their damage correctly. Oh, no. She abused the uh, the Gorehound. Hmm. Granny put his token down. Looks like the Gorehound is going to walk in, a gonna, million miles. going to start licking some uh, galvanizers. Licky lick. Oh. It's technically called a bite, but we know. We know what's happening. It does have a weird, freaky tongue. It has a super long tongue in people hands. He doesn't punch, Pagani. Get it right. That, that's not a great start. <laughs> First attack misses. That'll do. Yep. A 14 from abuse. Oh. Good old box cars that'll, damage roll. That'll do. Take 10 to the 3. Buy another tackle on the same fella. Kind of makes up fella. for that first miss. This is dice it. off 2 here. Who needs good tactics when you can dice your opponent out of the game? And JK. This is really good tactics. Oh, so looks like destroys himself a galvanizer. And two damage goes on the Gorehound. So Gorehound full up on Fury, but manages to eliminate one Galvanizer. 11 to go. 11 to go. Yes. One down. Oh, no. You know what's really cool about Galvanizers? What? So, uh, you know how he's got that sacrifice ability? Yeah. So, if I'm not crazy, yeah. Galvanizer has a crit giver's wounds, which stops damage from being removed. Though. Correct. If you saw, if you buzz saw them right, you're great. So one of the things to talk about with the play that Pakani just did is that force hammer. People would be like, "Oh, it's a cost four spell. Was it really worth it?" And it was because it shut down a lot of the counter charge potential that that Gorehound would add to face. Yeah. Yeah. No, Pagani's a uh, Pagani's a really, really good player. From time to time. From time to time. So the the skin and moans at the bottom just uh, mm -hmm. shifting forward. That is the beard and moans, sir. Oh, that's the, the beard and moans. Which model did he take the beard off of to give? Uh, I believe it's a Slayer-like loincloth. I realize that Slayers had loincloths. Uh, some of the characters do. Regardless, it's a Jack loincloth, which made a beard. Pagani running up one of the gremlin swarms and saying, do you want to counter charge? And Jay just laughing and going, no. He could, though. He has the option. There goes the other Gorehound. Quick check. I'm going to try to destroy another uh, Galvanizer. Yep. It's not abused, though, so it'll be a little bit of a harder no. time. But if he doesn't whiff the charge attack, it <laughs> might be a little bit easier. Correct. So looking for counter charge. No counter charges. Not even sure that Jay has a great one because of where the gremlins are placed. Because, well, you can move through them because they're incorporeal. You can't end on them. Yeah, this is dice off four now. So, bind an attack. So oh, now he's going to start buying all the servitors. Yeah, he's going to whiff there and he's going to stop buying attacks. Interesting choice. Probably isn't looking to have those Gorehounds frenzy next turn if he can help it. So another Gorehound. Those Gorehounds just being super aggressive. Mm -hmm. Let's get in there. Extended control range on the Gorehounds lets them go all day. <laughs> P 
Pagani was checking his threat range at the TEP and says, well, I'm already in it, so maybe I'm going to die, maybe I won't. I'm just going to move forward. Mm -hmm. He's going to make sure he stays out of aim range, though. All right, Dread Routes are going to run. He's going to get in there, get in the way, avoiding counter charges. Here come the pumpkin-headed weirdos. <laughs> They're coming to collect those mechanics. Like, we want you. Well, Axis is, they can get Axis as corpse. Sure. He's, they not, could. A he's, not, a, he's, he's not a robot. He's not a robot. He's wearing a robot, robot. suit. Yeah. He's basically like Iron Man. If Iron Man were, you know, completely deranged. Yeah. <laughs> you think Iron Man isn't? Not completely. I mean, he's definitely a sociopath. Captain America was right. You know that, right? Sure. Civil when was he right? Civil War. The first one? The, the comic and the movie. Okay. There's been another Civil War since then. The, the original, not the new one. Mm. I mean, technically, you say Captain America's right in the new one, too. I mean, but, number two. But hashtag Team Cap. Mm. I'd still join Iron Man. Oh, He's got all the cool toys. I fight for the force of morality. Mm. Apparently, Pagani's getting texted inappropriate things from the Twitch chat. All right, so the Dread Rod sort of moved up to stay, you know, in the best possible position they can, knowing the TAP can spray them all straight to death. Then we have a Krabbit walking up and jumping a little further up into that forest. Boing. Boing, boing, boing. Remember that in Steamroller 2017, you can move through your own objectives now. We'll see if that comes up. All right. Oh, we're finally going to see our first counter charge. Yeah, it's going to be from a uh, reflex server, though, not from one of the jacks. Kaboom. The little floating mine charges, misses, self-detonates, does two points to the three on the little crabbit, and then goes straight to robot hell. Wow. What about robot heaven? That doesn't exist. Oh, I see. Robots only get one place? Yep. Huh. All right, so the body is now out on that crabbit. From the second counter charge. Look at those little crabbits, little ridiculous, stupid faces. They're, I wouldn't call that ridiculous. I mean, they're toothy. Here comes the Death Knell. Now, Death Knell's able to move through its own objective, and he's checking to see if it will fit. And it will. Boop. So there we go. The fun card is there. Kind of Looks rose. like Pagani's about to, Pagani's about to end up. his turn and pass it back to Jay. Yep. Glimmer Imp. Steps in a position to be able to control the flag. <laughs> uh, no, Pagani, uh, Snarky, Pagani only runs three Gremlin Swarms. The reason being that he could not get his hands on a fourth gremlin swarm. Yeah, Lurie just couldn't own one. All right, search around, Hungerford. Show us what you think Jay's going to do. Mm. Where's the line of engagement going to be? Make us a picture. Sure. Uh, so what's going to happen is this is going to attack that. Wow. That was, was amazing. You're it's welcome. that kind of insightful commentary <laughs> that, you know, everyone expects from you. So let's really look at it, right? Basically, it's a giant line of counter charge, right? Hold on, let me, let me remove this. Except it's Jay's turn, so he doesn't counter charge. No, that's what I'm saying, but he has just a giant line of counter charge that basically comes like around like this, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. He has no real reason to push further than about here. Reason being, he can still meaningfully, meaningfully contest the zone, and he forces Pagani to come to him. Because as soon as he can start the, the countercharge pain train, because he doesn't really have great threat range to anything beyond just a couple of guys, and then he puts them in, the, in threat range of all the dread rots and all the heavies. So, yep, 
My my estimation is that Jay is not going to go too, 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 too far past here unless he decides to go super aggro. And when I say that, I mean with the majority of the force. He might send a couple guys in to try and tie things up, but the majority of the force is not going to be past that line. Mm. Riveting. Hey, man, you wanted me to tell a straight? I know. I'm riveting. I tell you a straight. It. You got it. I, don't be so defensive. I'm not defensive. We're with you. I'm with right you. <laughs> I saw Twitch that somebody says, "I believe a model." Will. Hold on, I'm gonna do the. the am I gonna do the? Uh, Are you gonna do the pool bet? There's no pool. The, the John Madden There's style. No pool. I mean, it's been a while since we've really had that level of commentary from like Ed Burrell or well, Mike Plummer. You know, we started doing more serious commentary. We still have a couple of the yucks. The oh, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the John Madden style commentary. Oh, where it's just where like, someone would literally say, "Running is double his movement." Yeah, the way you win the game of War Machine is that you have to win the game via scenario or maybe killing their caster. Sometimes they might clock out. Correct. You do this by moving your models and using your abilities and measuring your threat ranges and playing well. No. I was going to say, we've been having more serious commentary of this lock and load, actually calling the action, but we're also still idiots, and sometimes we say stupid things. That is, that is life. That is life. Jay's in the tank right now going through his order of operations because he has a million and one things going on. And they all look the same. What is that table marker doing? They've only got the one. This is 2017. Table marker rules are in effect. You can have two. Is there going to be a dev conference hangout at Gen Con, Zymergeist? I don't know, actually. Um, it looks what? like our convention manager is rapidly typing, so you might get an answer here. If you're watching this video on YouTube later Blah. on. Oh, there you go. And no you hangouts at this time. Sorry. No. Oh. You can always come by the booth, though, and hang out with us there. Outside of, like, Thursday when it's crazy, like, especially Sunday, it gets a little, it gets a little light, comes Zombie Town, USA. We're always there looking to talk, have fun. If you're watching this on YouTube later and you hear Shik say something that has nothing to do with the game you're watching, we have Twitch chat up, and so we're responding to some people on Twitch chat. Yeah. So please don't think that we're crazy. Or think that we do. I mean, it doesn't matter. Pagani pointing out that gremlin swarms cannot engage because nope. they lack the means to do so. They lack knives. Or teeth, apparently. You need knives. Can't engage without a knife. Which is interesting because in the Wicked Ways story by Matt Getz, yeah. chapter four, yeah. uh, they run around with all sorts of weapons. Oh, fluff does not equal rules. And they're very scary. Okay, we see the... Tree objective being removed and replaced with a proxy. And a proxy is different than a table marker. He's proxying it because, simply put, uh, the big tree looks awesome, but, but it is very difficult for him to move any models around. Uh, Cheddar Caveman, I have not seen any Storm Raptors at this event. Have you, Mr. Hungerford? Yeah, I saw some Storm Raptors. Cool. Couple They're here. asking, that's all. I haven't seen one. But I will admit, I've only been in the Iron Arena side of the hall and mostly around the streaming desk. So it looks like we have two table markers and one proxy down. I'm going to pay very close attention. I'm going to fuss at Bagani if he breaks this. What, if he puts down too many uh, table markers? Yeah. Yup. I mean, you can always run back there and just, like, slap his models off the table and be like, <laughs> you're DQ'd. Looks like Axis is going to pop his feet. Now, Axis' feet says all of his models get plus two speed and strength. Enemy models get negative two speed and strength. Somebody asking if the Convergence TEP changed much from the CID cycle, and it really did not. No, because it was really, 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 really good. We gained some boxes, right? That's about it. I think we gave it like one. <laughs> it really didn't need anything. That thing's amazing. It's 
So it looks like we have a corollary walking around to one of the gore hounds, and he's going to take the buzzsaw out and start sawing through his face. Yeah. Um, I'm not. Oh, Pagani is replacing his giant tree with one of these smaller objective markers. Mm hmm. Back to Jay, he has a, core, or a galvanizer, chainsawing through a uh, gorehound. Looks like he missed the first attack. He's going to buy an attack, induct the focus, and then take the second swing. Was that, was that a crit? Mm, I don't think it was. So hits, boost Ooh. the roll. Not bad. Dice plus one. Just straight 15 to the one. Not bad. So six points left on the Gorehound. Going to buy another attack. I mean, you can just kill him, right? Yep, hits. Dice plus one. I think he's got what? Yeah, he's dead. Got him on a f seven. And do we see an Arcana card get used? Probably not. No, there's no point. But no point. You say that. Jay is just in the tank on what he has to activate next. Well, I mean, feet is down, so he hits real good. Uh, the bigger part of the feet is probably going to be the plus two arm, though. Well, I should say not arm, but the minus strength. Either way, it's like plus two arm, but different. One well, of the galvanizers is backing up. Okay, so it looks like the Optifex Directive is going to give a couple of the galvanizers a uh, magic weapon so they can buzzsaw gremlin swarms in half. Okay, so two of the galvanizers just picked up uh, magic weapons. It's time to saw a gremlin right in the stupid face. A uh, giant magical robot saunters up to a swarm of gremlins, takes its buzzsaw out, and is just going to, you know, hope for the best. Murder some gremlins? So I think Jay has three focus on the uh, the Gremlin Swarm, and he's like, wait a second. The if galvanizer. I kill the, on the galvanizer. galvanizer. So he hits, and he's going to boost damage, but I think he can't get rid of all the uh, the focus. Uh, I mean, he could whiff it, uh, and he does no, not. No. Sad no. panda. <laughs> His first idea was I don't buy it, like, make the initial, and I have to roll under a six, so I miss. Then I buy boost boost, so I get rid of all three focus, but that's a pretty bad plan. Better just boost attack and damage and uh, go ahead and get rid of uh, get rid of two of it. Sit on one. Hate life. Oh, there it is. Ill Omens. Apparently there was a point. Yep, so a warrior model went down, which was the Grimless Swarm, and then Ill Omens, one of the Arcana cards of the Grand Can, has been played. Negative one to attack and damage rolls. Dude, slightly countering. The gross thing about ill omens is the fact that it applies everywhere. It's not. It's not. It's not nice. It's like, really not nice. Unlike those whole control range limitations and such, no. It's madness. See the Attack other galvanizer walking up. He's going to rip apart a gorehound. Going to try. See a boost. Inducting to the other galvanizer. It was not a crit on the hit. Straight dice damage. Says take 10 to the 4. Pretty good. Bye. 
critting, so he can't heal it. Yep. So two points left on that Gorehound right here, but he, for some reason, could be healed. He can't be because he just got crit grievous. He's not going to be around anyway. We'll see. We'll see. It's good to keep track of it. Yeah, it looks like that galvanizer is just ripping a gorehound to shreds. Well, Magical I mean, robot rip two boxes left. So magical robot murdering a uh, living nightmare. Sure, that that robot less magical though than the one that killed the gremlin swarm. I mean, it's still the one that killed the gremlin swarm is really magical. It's still like a voltaic, voltaic wind up robot. That's yeah. pretty magical. I mean, it's fairly magical, but not magical enough to kill gremlin swarms. That's what I'm saying. Only that one that they reconfigured. To make more magical. How do they even do that? They added an air freshener. <laughs> like a little little pine tree that is yeah. hanging on the back, and yep. he's like, I can punch ghosts. Yep. That's like the Dumbo feather. You just have to believe hard enough. Like, how do we make this stupid robot believe that it can punch ghosts? Here, this is a magical tree talisman. Oh. Look at Jay proving me wrong by discharging a dude all the way in. I mean, his, his, his line of engagement is still basically behind where I said it was going to yeah, be. Yeah, sure. But you, can, you can argue to make yourself right however you want. But once again, as always on live stream, when you make a prediction, you've been completely wrong. I just said, look at Jay proving me wrong. I know. I know. Mm. And now you're like, but but Bruh. in actuality, I'm still right because of reasons I just made up. Meh. Meh. Now you're giving me the penguin noises? <laughs> All right. So you got a crit grievous in on the, uh, the skin of moans. Dice off four. Not bad. Ten to the one. And he did crit Grievous on that hit, like I said, so no healing the skin of moans. Mine's out. Oof, oof, oof. Pagani pointing out that Tantrum has been triggered because something did get wounded within the range of it. So something will get to move and uh, make an attack at the beginning of his turn. So, Inverter's going to charge for free. Inverter's going up to where his table marker had been placed much, much earlier in the game. Who was Jay charging? I didn't catch. I'm pretty sure he's charging the death now. But it might be the Krabbit? I don't really know. Must be the Krabbit. No, it's definitely the Death Knell. Yep, so he's charging the Death Knell. So six points to the Death Knell. We'll see if Jay can take this death knell out with just a inverter under ill omens, but also access his feet. Looks like this dice roll is going to be off four with the off weapon. So just do 11. Just casual 11. De boosting. He needs a nine on three dice to be able to take him out. Uh-oh. So it looks like the Death Knell survived with the bad die roll. Ooh. Don't want to see that. No, he can still get a Galvanizer. I think he can still get a Galvanizer in there. He'll take a free strike, but... We'll see. Okay, let's see if we can... 
Okay, so it looks like the elimination, elimination servitor is going to go first to try and clear out the, uh, the dread rot. Oh, is the TEP going first? Looks like it. Jay is deep in the tank. Deep? I mean, I don't know if I say deep. Partially He's in the tank. He's definitely thinking. He might be like dipping a toe in right now. Apparently, TEP's just going to murder a gore hound. Okay, so look at the TEP just going at that Gorehound in front of it. Yeah, first attack uh, missed, second one hit. So dice off three, did seven points to the three on the Gorehound in front of the TEP. Misses, ooh, Jay's dice just giving out on him. So the TEP just whiffed two of its, uh, two of its sprays and got nothing done. Roll bad is a problem. Someone in Twitch chat asked, why are we not streaming Masters Finals? We would love to, but Masters Finals is not painted. We prefer to stream only painted games. <laughs> but Connie, kindly letting Jay kind of reposition his models after the fact, telling him we're not playing for Worlds, and then immediately complaining that he's going to kill his Krabbit. Yeah. So Jay is going to start using uh, game tokens to mark who is activated. So these are neither proxy bases or table markers. These are in-game effects marking which models have activated so he doesn't lose track, which makes sense when you have 12 of the exact same model. You know, when he picks up his company of iron box, that he's going to have some sweet activated tokens that he can use. That's true. They do come with activation tokens, which are pretty useful in that game and even useful in situations like this. Mm -hmm. Gonna be looking for it. Come some elimination servitors. So tough roll. All right, so those are the dread rod, rod dies. The dr yeah, the dread rod that might have been taking the free strike against the uh, the galvanizer is now dead. Corollary or galvanizer goes up into the death knell. Really? Those are both people I want to be twenty. Three left on the death knell, so a galvanizer should be able to do it under Axis's feet. So it needs a 10 to kill. That'll do. That's enough. That'll do. More than enough. Goodbye, Death Knell. We hardly saw you. Remember, this is the last right. game for us from Lock and Load 2017 after a epic
battle for Boar's Gate holding narratively where we saw 16 players, 8v8, with 8 defenders, 8 attackers. Uh, go an epic Iron head. Gauntlet World Finals. Right. Uh, we had an awesome Iron Gauntlet World Championship Finals, the last of the Iron Gauntlet series, as the format is changing for next year, where that will just become the World Championship Tournament that is held here at Lock and Load. Yep. And qualifications will be done through Champions and Masters events, which can be held around the world. Yep. In addition, we had uh, some fun staff games. We saw Jason Souls take down Jason Green with his Grimkin Army. We saw the end of our PA Plays War Machine, six-week-long uh, journeyman tournament where Kiko Vasanore took on and won against Jamie and her Signa Army with a Via Signora, sorry. Excuse me, John, but thank you. You're uh, the best. Again, a voice, voice in my head. Those of you watching Via on Senor. YouTube later on, Schick does like to respond to everything you don't know that's going on. So when you hear him just start yelling things randomly, it's either Twitch chat, John or Tony in our ears, someone standing in front of us saying things, or just the voices. Yeah, there's a lot of voices. Now... Moving on. And then, of course, this final game uh, that is streamed at Lock and Load between Jay uh, from Chain Attack yeah. and Pagani playing his Grimkin army. Pagani looks like he is in some trouble. I mean, he, he popped one of his Arcana cards. Yep. It didn't really help, unfortunately. It did not. Uh, the power of uh, Axis's feet combined with all those magical buzzsaws and non-magical buzzsaws. Uh, ton of damage. Ton of damage. So it's going back to Pagani's turn. He's picking up all his fury. Using a couple of serenities from the Gremlin Swarms to manage some of that. All right, so we're going to have Tantrum Trigger. Somebody asked in Twitch chat, is because uh, we're talking about uh, painting requirements and masters and things like that, is the uh, the Convergence player, Jay, is his army really more than three-color airbrushing? And the answer is, you know, Jay's army looks fine, and it's not terribly difficult, no. Simple, simple painting techniques are, it, it's still painted. Masters doesn't have the old hardcore style painting requirements or anything like that, you know. Even base coating's fine. So here we go. Needs a five. Rolls double ones. Which attack was that? That was the tantrum attack. Oh, that was his tantrum attack? That was his tantrum attack, which wasn't much of a tantrum. It was mostly just a whimpering. So... Ill Omens is a one round, which means that it lasts through Pagani's turn, so counter charges will be affected by the minus one. Nice. And you can only play one Arcana card a, t Arcana card a turn, and there is a chance he will be able to use another Arcana card this turn from a counter charge. Would have been great if that, uh, that Death Knell had survived in order to be healed by sacrifice. Yep. But it didn't. It died. Nope. You did. In spectacular fashion. Looks like a Krabbit's advancing and taking a bike. Uh, uh, jumped forward and is taking a uh, bite on one of the reflex servitors. Hits. He's only POW 6 because of Axis's feet. Remember, all of Pagani's models that were in Axis's feet have minus 2 to their strength. Yep. And a Nightmare Rabbit eats an explosive robot mine. That's right. This is the world we live in, folks. Welcome to War Machine. Uh, Pagani's also suffering from minus 2 speed on all of his models as well that were in Axis's feet. And there goes the last tree of the forest. Carriana Rose is going to activate. And she's going to enrage that cage rager. Enrage the cage rager. He wasn't raging enough. Yeah. He needed to be ragier or. or. There's the child. He's going to punch himself a galvanizer. Yeah, the child is a very, very tough beater here. So not doing the galvanizer. Going to oh. do the gremlin swarm. Going to sabotage the inverter. So it takes four damage. And he gets to choose the column, so he chooses three. So the other Gremlin Swarm is going to run. Only eight inches because of Axis's feet, though. Mm hmm. Getting base to base of that Galvanizer, which will cause some shenanigans on Jay's next turn. Child is now activating and is going to try and beat herself a chainsaw bot to death. Gone and going back, needing to frenzy. Uh, 
so we see a frenzy. Yeah, so Pagani realized he didn't make his frenzy checks, and so he's going to resolve those now. So the Gorehound up by the TEP frenzied and also ate an explosive mine. Looks like the Krabbit also is going to frenzy. Yeah, that Krabbit is also frenzying, and he's also going to attack the, uh, the little explosive mine. I have informed Pagani he must roll in the box. He, he also ate a little tiny explosive. Num, 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 num. It's like a sa it's like a sour warhead. Num 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 boom. Nom boom. Yep. Nom, nom boom. boom. Okay, back to the actual game now that Pagani has uh, reversed back to actual legal game state. Yes. Looks like she missed her initial attack. <laughs> Hit the second. At least dice off two because it acts as his feet. Child, child can do this. I mean, maybe. Not with those rolls. So one damage to three on the cage rager from abuse. 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 If I'm not mistaken, yes. both the skin and moans and the uh, yeah, both the skin and moans and the cage rager are both abused. Correct. So did Child actually fail to kill that galvanizer? Yes. What is going on? I mean, he rolled poorly. What is going on? That's, that's all it is. I did not catch what the uh, mischief roll was from the gremlin that walked up and... Uh, they don't mischief yet. They mischief... Oh, yeah, it wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't actually activate during the activation. That's right. Thank you. Donk, yeah. So, boost hit because body is out on... Because body is out, didn't So misses. Ugh. Yeah, his mind was out. He boosted up the two dice. Miss. Does it? Finally. Boost hits on the second one. It's power plus strength 19 because of abuse plus the corpse. Back down to 17 because of Axis's feet. It's dice plus one needs to roll a four. The galvanizer is dead. So many modifiers. Ah. So many attacks on that single galvanizer just to kill it. Yeah, it just took, uh, you know, the child and uh, skin and bones. Axis's yeah. feet is up, though. That seems legit. Axis's feet is up. Even still, the child runs around with a literal monster. All right. So the cage rider picked up a Pathfinder from the objective from the fuel cache. It had, had plus two speed from abuse. Or, sorry, uh, yeah, from abuse. But I had negative two because access his feet, so he just walked up four inches. Looks like he's going to try and fight himself an inverter. Uh, I mean, the inverter's already kind of hurting from that tiny little scratch the gremlins gave it, so. Needs four. Does it. So up to a 21, back down to a 19 between Cariana Rose's enrage and the abuse. It's just straight dice. Hits with the second initial. Ten more. That's a good roll. Pagani just dicing, dicing that inverter out of the game. Well, the pendulum is swinging back and forth wildly. Yeah. Hit, crit, nothing. Wow. Well, if you roll nothing lower than a nine, I guess you can just, you know, murder anything in the game. Cage Rager brings back some life to this Grimkin fight.
And there we see Pagani is leaning in, figuring out what he's going to do with his dread rods next. Yep, he's going to push that line of engagement forward more than likely. Probably trying to shut down counter charges as best he can. Right, he doesn't have enough speed to get up there. Not with axes ruining everything. Yeah, Jade. we even hear Pagani asking, Let's "Do you want to counter charge?" And charge? Jade is firing off the nope. No counter charge again. See the first counter charge, def twelve. Uh, looks like a uh, yeah. One of the dread rods goes down to the first counter charge mm -hmm. from Jay on this turn. More dread rods filling in the zone. Mm -hmm. Boop. Hey, that's an army of high tech uh, robots. We got pitchforks and pumpkin heads. That's way more than enough to counter high tech robotics. Pitchforks and pumpkin things? heads. Yeah, have you looked at those things? All of the gears are exposed. You stick a pitchfork in that, it's done. Poor design. Okay. Poor design. Okay, so it looks like three of the dread rots are uh, attacking on the uh, the galvanizer here. Yeah. It's dice off six, not the normal Pagani roll, not just, you know, trip sixes. So dice off eight. Ooh. And third guy missed. Well, the Dread Rod just did a whole bunch of nothing. Other Dread Rod is going to attack the Explosive Mine because that's smart. It's fine. He loves it. Hey, what's the best way to blow a dug-in floating mine? Stab it with a pitchfork. Mm -hmm. Grimkin are stupid. I mean, no, you, you stab it with a pitchfork, which is wielded by one of your worthless pumpkin-headed dudes. I mean, like, they, when I say stupid, I just mean, like, they just don't think what they're doing. No, they can't. Hey, a bomb. They're slaves. Slap it. They didn't even understand what it was. Slap he thought the bomb. it was just another pumpkin. He was just trying to say hello. Uh, the shadow-esque skin and moans is going to walk up and is going to uh, what? Swing over that corollary. There is a corollary here. You can't really. I'm going to pull the telestrator. I mean, unfortunately, like, the only bald, right. the only two oh. bald wills are Oz and Pagani, and Pagani still has you know some hair. Oz is probably the only true sure. bald will. Right. Right there is the Twitch. Uh, Twitch the, wants to know about baldness. What? Can you draw me a picture on Pagani's baldness? I'm not going to draw. On t uh, no, we don't use the telestration for things like that. That's just not true. You don't because you think you're being fun, but you're actually being lame. No. Look, Twitch right now is really interested in why the whales fail at baldness. We need to defend ourselves. First of all, you and I are not even bald. I have thick, luscious so hair. So we totally failed being Like bald. an ape. But only on my head. Mm. I am hairless from the neck down. Mm. Like an apple. No, I no, let it sink in. Sure. You have a red, delicious skin. So it looks like their control point score is actually 1-0 from last turn. Uh, I did not catch that earlier, but the players both agreed that happened. So, I believe that uh, Wendy Sales from Twitch is asking for you to telestrate the light radiating off of G and Jay's head. No, that's so mean. Why would I do that? I mean... Why is everybody so mean? Does that mean? Why are you guys mean? It's Why are you gals mean? Why are the guys just, and gals all mean? It's just a simple. It's just a simple question. Hold on. I will. Okay. Twitch chat. I'm going to help. What's this? No. That's a terrible N. I mean, at best, it's like a V that has like no. a mullet. It's a mullet V. No. No. It's a mullet V and three people who have fallen on their heads. We are not. I don't even know what that was. It's a mullet V, and we're not going to put uh, light coming off people's heads, Twitch. That's not okay. I mean, I don't understand why you got to deny Jay his, like, radiant crown. That I like how we've in. called the action Your every game crown. every game this weekend until ju it literally things are going off the Look, rails as we speak. <laughs> to be fair, I'm not the one going off the rails. I'm simply responding to the Twitch chat, which I was asked to do. All and they're asking is, for these things. All you've done is respond to voices in your head or, like, actually listen to what Tony and John say. Yeah, and then because like, they've asked me to do certain things. And you haven't done them. I, I I agree. I agree. Chrono twenty six. I think inner bald. I think inner bald Hungerford has become upset. I think that inside. Do you, do you even know who username Chrono twenty six is? I don't care. I agree with them. It's one of my favorite Australians. They have they have spoken with authority, and I believe one of my favorite Australian players. I mean, why are you being so sensitive about this? By the way, Chrono, I miss you. Come back. 
Hey, everyone. It's Jay's turn. We missed some things. Oh, Probably. We didn't miss anything. I don't know. Because Schick anything. just it's lost fine. control of everything. Oh, my God. Yeah, blame me. Blame uh, me. Hey, Tony, real fast. I'm going to see how under uh, the child says feet on your, your bottom third right there, you know? Yeah, Grimkin don't get that, so. Shouldn't say feet. All right. Let's see. Back to the game. Mm -hmm. There's a crab that about to go get galvanized. So, where's the child? Child's standing right here? Yep. Child's hanging out. Facing down a whole bunch of galvanizers. Yeah, I mean, all he really does, he clears out this crab, he clears out this crab. The threat ranges aren't. I mean, he's not just, without he, access to his feet anymore. He kind of, but the problem is, he's got this this gremlin swarm right here, and he his his optifex directive is all like up here. So like this thing's a problem. Nobody has. Uh, Pagani should have scored, correct? As, yeah, Pagani should have scored. So I believe he scored at least one since that Glimmer Imp is controlling the flag. I believe the score might actually be one to one. But luckily, we don't have a table judge to confirm that. Why would you think it'd be one to one? Uh, I think that Jay actually scored uh, last turn on his own flag. And I think Pagani just scored again on the flag at the top right, using a solo to score. That was uncontested. One to one it is. Yep, so the control point score is one to one right now. Jay scoring just like I said. Pagani scoring just like I said. It's almost like I'm paying attention. I mean, almost. Except Tony had to ask you the question of if there was a score before you actually started thinking about it. So maybe like a 25% kudos. All right. This is, I like I like what we got going on back here. This guy's dope. What's his name again? Gullen. Gullen. <laughs> Jay has apparently decided he's going for assassination. Pagani does not seem too uh, too phased by the statement that Jay is going to try to kill the child. Oh, was Jay going in for an assassination? Jay has stated that he's going in for assassination run. If you weren't, you know, so distracted doodling. I was pointing uh, out. Have, I was pointing. I was pointing and, out the dope uh, statue you know in the background. Like there's a straight up like troll dude in the background. Oh, no, I think it's cool. You just go ahead and use the telestration for all the inappropriate things. Look, man, I've done plenty of really good telestration. Okay, mm. and I've pointed out meaningful things. You did draw that one sweet T when you said Jay's going to go this way. I know. Mm -hmm. It was pretty good. It was amazing. <sighs> Pagani does it better. Hashtag Pagani Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hashtag Apple Sticky. You don't need to know what that one's about, by the way. I don't care. You will. I wasn't even listening. I was watching this game. I was actually uh, paying paying close attention to this game. What? Yep. That's what I was doing. Nothing's happened yet. Uh, I know. And you know what? I know that better than you do. Jay's actually allocating some focus right now. D I did, we hear Jay exclaiming from the table mic, nothing can go wrong with this plan. I mean, As mostly it's Pagani who has snapped. It's been a long, lock and load weekend for him, and he's getting a little punchy. Well, how can you get punchy? We get to play games all week. You hang out with the staff. It's still hang out tiring. with the community. Like, you still get silly at the end. You get to roll dice. Like, and you like... don't sleep enough. Your food intake is all random and weird. You get punchy. doesn't matter if you had fun. That's not, that's not anything about it. I'm interested to see if the child goes down. I think she's camping nothing. She doesn't have it. She worked on that galvanizer and abused a bunch of things. And the two remaining arcana would not really help against an assassination run. The, you know, one of them heals everything to full, and the other one uh, increases the fury of the battle group by one. So, Well, technically, when she dies, he could play the arcana card and heal all his war beasts. True, true. So it looks like Jay allocated one focus to those front four. 
right there. So we see an elimination server activating, walking up, and taking a shot at a dread rot. Yep. Shoots him. Pagani almost forgets tough, but then doesn't. And he's tough. Yay. Shoots the same guy, rolls not snake eyes, murders himself the tough roll. The tough dread rot. See another elimination server walking up. Going to bust a cap at another uh, dread rot. Mm -hmm. Bust. Cap. Bust and he's dead. Bust. Nope. Leader replacement. <laughs> Jay hoping that he can make Axis's weapons magical with the... Uh, Opt effects directive, and Pagani pointed out that he doesn't think that's true because he thinks it's only on yeah. construct models. And it sure is. So Axis cannot get magical <laughs> weapons. <laughs> Jay asking why Axis doesn't have magical weapons to begin with. Pagani pointed out the very true fact that Convergence hates him. And now those gremlin swarms are invincible to Axis. Uh, Axis is still going to activate and walk up and say, you're a weird-looking little crabbit. How about I beat you to death? He just wants to give it hugs, but they only gave him hammer hands. And then it just makes and this so weird like, squonking sound as he's just punching it in the head with a hammer over and well, again. Well, he's trying to hug it again. No. He's trying to hug. It's a vicious beating. No, no. He's trying to hug it. He's like, I just want to hug you. It's, just, it's looking at with giant like and puppy then, dog eyes. And, and it's just like Sir going. Sir Hammer Hands just smashes him. He's just no. like. <laughs> he's like, why does everything I love die? Why did you curse me with these hammer hands? What? <laughs> All right, good. We've gotten to that part of lock and load. Axis, kill a rabbit. I don't, I don't understand how you didn't follow that. That was, that was completely clear. Uh, Axis one-shots a crabbit, giving fury over to the child, which mm -hmm. he suddenly realizes maybe not the right. best idea. Now the, ch <laughs> now the child assassination run just got a lot less likely. So an elimination servitor runs away. This game is getting weird. <laughs> uh, so, so Axis's whole activation was just one shot of Krabbit and give some fury to the child. Yes, his whole activation was a mistake. Because <laughs> because YOLO. That's a, that's effectively what Jay Jay ascended to afterwards. <laughs> Much to Magani's like joy. All right, so Corlary walked over, gave some to one of the galvanizers. I imagine he's going to go in on the child. The Corlary is actually attacking one of the elimination servicers to uh, burn its focus points, I guess. Why? I don't really understand it anymore, but that is what happened. He, he's making a melee attack against his elimination servitor. Oh, maybe he wanted to induct. He wanted to induct a different, uh, different uh, jacks. That's why. That is the weirdest possible way to do it. Well, you know. Oh, we, we have. A, it looks like a galvanizer charging the child. <laughs> so there goes the galvanizer. So here comes your mischief, Hungerford. And we'd know, but the sound just died. Yep. I think it was minus two speed, I would assume. So he, he's going to run. Okay. And he's going to induct. Yeah. So the galvanizer was going to charge. The, the Gremlin Swarm's yes. mischief gave it a negative two speed, so then it couldn't charge. Correct. Well, it could, but it couldn't reach where it needed to go. Yeah. So he just ran nowhere to induct the focus. Now we have a galvanizer actually charging the child. Inducting over there, making the boost attack roll. Hits, crits. Oh, 
Looks like this is dice off five here for the damage roll. Hey. That's pretty good. <laughs> so Pagani considering if he wants to transfer or not. Eleven. Jay points out there's not going to be a better roll than that. So Pagani's looking at his damage round. Time went back to Jay Larson, though, which is interesting. So, <coughs> Gorehound was the transfer target? I think he said Cage Rager. Cage Rager? Yeah, I love it, too. Looks like we have another Galvanizer going yep. in. Yep. To boost a hit at yep. the charge. Hits and crits again. He's armored 19 now because of the. Uh, uh, forget the name of the ability the child has off the top of my head. Let me just look real fast. But she gives uh, once she takes damage, she uh, she gets angry. She, she gets righteous angry. vengeance or righteous? No outrage. Outrage. When she's damaged, she gets plus two strength at arm and pathfinder for one round. Looks like that charge tech did one point of damage to her. And then retaliatory strike. So Pow 18. That's real good. Nice. 13 points to 6 on that galvanizer. Doesn't remove any of its systems, though, thanks to their unique box layout. You ever notice that a, a bee without wings just looks like a fat, weird ant? Wearing a pinstripe suit? Yeah, like, look, think about a bee without wings. Yeah, no, I got it. Just it's a fat, weird ant. Is it a bumblebee, though? Is yeah. That what talking about? Well, yeah. Okay. Well, there's a lot of different types of bees. I mean, bumblebees are really large. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. But like a, like a bumblebee. Yeah. Just, no, I got the it. wings are gone. Yeah. And you look at the front of the head, it's like kind of like an ant. Kind of. But it's just like fat Not and weird. really. Ants have mandibles. Bees don't. Dude, I mean, don't use science. Okay. Thanks. All right. Back to the game. I mean, effectively, a bee is just an ant in a zoot suit at that point. I, I like that. I like that. He just needs a fancy fedora. And then he could crossbeed with the queen and make bee ants. I imagine that's the TEP attacking, but I didn't quite hear them say what it was doing. No, uh, what matters is that the Dread Rot is tough. and Oh, no, that was an explosion from a reflex servitor, Correct. I do believe. And now the Dread Rot is dead from the elimination servitor follow-up. Yeah. So that guy's free. So sacrifice. Everybody heals. Uh, he's got to check the control range to make sure that model's inside of it. So, yep, Sacrifice gets played, and every model in uh, Pagani's control area. Except for the child, right? Because she's suffering Grievous. Yeah, except for the child. Though she only took one point of damage. So, really, win. Looks well, like one of the Kravitz just took eight damage from one of the Galvanizers and got Grievous. Another galvanizer are going to walk up, try and bust all a rabbit in half. Mm -hmm. And I believe it does. Yep, he's gone. This child reefs some more fury. Looks like another Galvanizer now at the bottom of the screen is taking an attack on some... Well, it doesn't really matter what's attacking because it I has a real... attacking the Gremlin Swarms and it keeps missing. Oh. No, it was a Krabbit. It couldn't attack the Gremlin Swarm. It was still incorporeal. But Jay rolled a 4-3-2. Mm -hmm. Needing sixes to hit. 
I mean, it didn't really matter. As you pointed out, he's just trying to get the focus. <laughs> Brave little reflex servitor. He's going or, in there. He's got things to do. Oh, those are elimination servitors. No? Yeah, those elimination servitors. Yeah, those are elimination servitors. They're getting in there. They're protecting hammer hands. Yeah, access is really, really close. He had a plan, and then he realized his plan was bad. Looks like the Galvanized Divider is just walking straight through a gremlin saying, well, I don't even care that you're there. It doesn't matter. He hits a Krabbit. They're going to boost damage, put it back on the Corollary, murder the hell out of it. Oh, no, he's got four left. So he's going to buy attack, boost a hit. Yeah, that's pretty good. BX cars. That'll do. That'll do. That is a dead, dead crab. Sad. Line of uh, dead pile over there by the uh, portal is looking real, real yeah, large. But there's a really good chance that the cr the child's about to just murder Axis. Um, I'm sure that's what she'd like to do. Um, this one happened, this one happened. Uh, <laughs> Looks like we have another elimination servitor walking up, shooting at mm -hmm. one of the dread rots. Does a point to him. Gets a tough roll, tough roll, says nope. Pagani's running out of models. Um, He's sort of, but he has all the models that matter. No, the Death Nell's dead. Yeah, that would be sad if, you know, it mattered, which I don't think that it does at this point. Yeah. I mean, he's got all three of his heavies, which are fully healed, <laughs> and uh, he's got the child. And Jay has now challenged him to unlock the bubble. All right, so frenzy check on the skin of moans up top because there was too much fury out there. And we're going to figure out if he tantrums first or if he uh, makes the frenzy check. Pagani says he doesn't care. He's not going to worry about looking it up. He's just going to do things. I'll find out for you, Pagani. So passes his frenzy check. Does, does the frenzy check first? Well done, well done Pagani. Mm -hmm. You got it right. Uh, now you tantrum. Tantrum. Very proud of you. <laughs> so smacking an elimination servitor. Needs a six. Hits, and there's a dead servitor. Okay. And, uh, all of a sudden, the bubble has been unlocked, I think. Uh, not... Tantrum going away. Yep. Is he just going to try and abuse and rage a cage rager and have him beat Axis to death? Yep. Child's activating first. He's going uh, yep. to abuse. abuse. He said in rage. He meant abuse. They can't hear him, so it doesn't matter. You don't have to correct him. Way to, way to undercut him. Yeah, Pagani's just moving things out of the way. Child, Child literally didn't even make attacks. He just no. cast abuse, enraged with carry on a rose, and he's just going to have a cage rager walk up to uh, Axis and see what's about to happen. No, we're rewinding back to the child <laughs> making his attacks. Rolls the snake this, eyes. This is the kind of high level this is that play kind of high we level promised you yeah, at the start. Yeah, thanks, Pagani, for this high mm -hmm. level clean play. Mm -hmm. JK, it doesn't matter. It's not a tournament game. It is not. It's a, it's a fun game. It is for fun, and it's casual and relaxed. Yeah, as it should be. And these guys have played each other numerous times. Literally millions of times. Whoa, millions? Yeah. You ever notice that a fat ant with wings looks like a bee? Only if you spray paint it with black stripes. Oh, that, don't spray paint your ants. I'm just saying, if I find a fat ant, i got to spray paint it. It's <laughs> a weird OCD. <laughs> that, that is a strange obsession. It just needs to happen, okay? That's all right, man. That's It's a shaming thing or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you say it's a shaming thing? Yeah, I need to shame fat ass. <laughs> You're like, hey. Hey, you little porker. Actually, and it's like. No, no, no. no. <laughs> to be fair, it has nothing to do with the size of the ant or the ant itself. My goal is to put it into beehives. 
and then create cross ants. It's all part of the. It's all part of the part of the. Uh, Wait, hold up. The antes. This might be the end of the game. The it abused, enraged yeah, cage rager is coming up it. on the axis. All right. To be fair, Chrono Twenty Six Hungerford started it. Okay. Oh uh, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. It is time for the counter charges to yes. start. As we hear Pagani yell, "Punt, counter punt!" <laughs> it is time for him to have completely forgotten about everything Axis does. All right, Crick Grievous, take out the spirit, and that, that, that would be the end of it. Right. Again, I'm not the one going off track. This is Hungerford. The Twitch chat is blaming me for this ant talk that you keep starting. Yeah, man. I'm trying to keep you on the level so we can commentate on the game. I'm going to. And you're talking about spray painting ants and putting them back in beehives. No, I'm, you're the. Uh, I'm going to. All right, so counter charge from the galvanizer going in on the cage yep. ranger. Okay, it looks like it's a free strike from the Cage Rager going on the Galvanizer who Do just it, charged KG. him. Do it, <laughs> So. He can't get to the back arc because his movement gets crippled from the free strike. He hits uh, no Craig Grievous. His movement was taken out during the charge. Yep. So he had to stop. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's what I'm saying. No back strike. Didn't matter, though. He hit. <laughs> Jay, real excited by that roll. I mean, actually, what happens when your movement's taken out from a free strike during a charge? Yeah. According to them, you move back. No, I mean, I know what happens. I mean, it ain't that. That's fine. But I'm it, telling you, like, what the players just did, it was that. Yeah, I'm going to let them do them. Okay, that's cool. That's I mean, that's, that's what happened. It doesn't matter because nothing else can get in. Not anymore. That other galvanizer probably could have. <laughs> so back, back to Pagani. He's going to try and uh, take out uh, Axis, even though they... <laughs> Not exactly how that works out, but all right. Here we go. Needs eights. Hits. It's a pal 21. Dice so plus three on plus axis. Plus three. Does 10. Good start. Five yeah. Soaks five. Takes five. It's going to boost ahead on the Got second 13 initial. left. Needs eights to hit. Definitely hits. Crit nothing. It's real good. So seven points this time. Right. Find attack, boost to hit. Yup. This is the last second he's got in on Axis. <laughs> Find attack, boosting to hit, and missing. <laughs> missing by one. Misses by one. <laughs> We're forgot to yell, like, it's a will disaster. Not end. It will not end. <laughs> so Pagani now trying to figure out how to salvage it. <laughs> the Krabbit has been promoted to world class Krabbit hero. Krabbit Axis, hero. Axis has no focus left in like what, eight damage boxes? Uh, first one was seven. No, first one was five. Second one was seven. So that's 12. He has six boxes left. Six boxes six left? Six boxes left. So that the Krabbit advances and then hops. No, it doesn't, it doesn't advance. It just hops. It just hops. Oh, it just hops. He's going to be the champion Krabbit. Is <laughs> He's going to earn the golden ears. He needs a seven to hit Nexus's back. He's got this. Boom. No problem. All right. It's POW 8. POW 8. It's dice, uh -huh. dice minus 10. Dice minus 10. Israel is 16 to kill him. Yep. 16. Here it is. <laughs> Just straight up no damage. So nothing happens. Uh, Pagani is pointing out to us, the commentators, that he gained a CP. Hold on one second. We don't care. <laughs> I let him know that we don't care. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. So the skin and moans trying to trying to finish it out. 
Oh, oh, can he get the skin and bones in there? Oh, this is not nearly as close as we thought. Maybe. I don't. He's trying to figure it out right now. Going to take a free strike. All right. So <laughs> that's all the Fury tokens ever. I don't know what's happening anymore. He had to animus to get Pathfinder. He already had uh, one. Yeah, he charged. He charged. And he boosted to hit. He hits. So he hit. So it's minus dice minus one. one. Three dice. That'll do it. it. All, right, all right. So Pagani pulls it out uh, in the final stream match at Lock and Load 2017. Uh, with Tons of suspense. So let's get a shot of our winning winning players here. Excellent, uh, excellent end of the stream game here. Well, let's get a shot of Will Pagani having just won with his uh, skin and moans. It's no, you don't get it. You know, oh, 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 the, oh, zoom, out, the oh, zoom out, the zoom out, the zoom out. All right, and, and I'm there gonna we take, go. I'm go there we go. And, oh wait, so I need you to sit still, Pagani. He can't. Yay. So, we uh we will be seeing well, Pagani therefore again at Lock and Load 2018 thanks to this this pullout victory. Yay! Yay, Will Pagani! Was that an OP or is that a face or is it both? Was it an OP face? No, it was just a it was a smiley face. What was that? That it was, was a smiley not. Face. That wasn't a smiley face. Lock and Load 2017. It's done in man. the books. Boarsgate, IG, uh, well, staff I mean, games, Penny Arcade plays. Grimkin, Mini Crate, Alexa, 12 a, Factions of Christmas. It's been a really good show. Theme Forces. It's been a really good show. It's been loaded. Company of Iron. It's been a really good show. Blew up today. I had to go find extra decks. Yeah. I had to magic up extra decks. So people like coming out. It's, it's crazy. If you weren't here, you should have been. Yep. We're sorry that you weren't here. We'd love to see you here next year. Check us out at Gen Con if you're going to be in the Indianapolis area. Yeah. Uh, that will be the next show we're at. And we always love to talk to people when we have a chance uh, outside of the crazy lines of the booth. But we will be there in force. Uh, outside of that, after that, we've got War Machine, uh, Weekend. War Machine Weekend. And we will be at PAX Pl uh, Unplugged in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I'm think. going to PAX Unplugged this year. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be the first year we're throwing a lot of effort behind that show. So uh, lots of cool stuff coming. Thank you for joining us for this weekend of streaming. Again, check us out next year, Lock and Load 2018. Details will be up soon, and uh, we will see you at the next one.